All right, so what's up guys? So we are out here on another run, out here running. And, you know, earlier it rained, then the sun came out, then it looks like it's gonna rain again. And, you know, who knows what's gonna happen today. But who cares? Right, we're still out here running and doing this craziness, right? Continuing to be a student of the game, right? Learning new things along the way and going to class and studying by right? putting our bodies through, you know, this misery, right? This pain and torture, right? It's teaching us how to handle it and how to run and get better at this because that's what we want to do as students of the game. And for you, you might be a student yourself, right? A traditional student, right? Whether you're in, you know, school, college, university, right? Taking classes and so forth, right? Although I'd like to say that we are all students, right? We all study things, right? We're all learning. And in essence, that makes us a student. But in the traditional sense, you want to figure out, you know, how to be a good student, right? How to absorb that knowledge in the best way. So don't worry because we are going to give you four success tips for our students. And without further ado, we're gonna give you tip number one, numero uno. And that is to clear yourself of distractions. I, for many of us, you know, when we go to class and so forth, I've been guilty of it, right? Checking my phone every five minutes, right? Checking on the scores of the game, worrying about those outside Thanks, or stuff that's happening at home, so forth. Although those things may seem important, or right? they may seem fun and funner than the class, right? We don't want to say that, but for some of you, it may feel that way. But, you know, they're ultimately pulling us away from the class and what's being taught, right? Taking our attention off of it. And for that reason, you want to eliminate them, but right? you want to take away those distractions because, you know, ultimately, you're not gonna hear what's being said and retain it and learn it and apply it, right? Well, there may be on that test, but throughout your life later on, right? when you're actually asked to apply that knowledge, hopefully, right? Because, you know, it doesn't stop, you know, when you take the test, right? You know, for me, I studied engineering and, you know, although they may have given us a quite variety of tests, I know that those tests are given for a reason. Because when we're on the job, right, when it's asked of us to solve these problems that require these different physics equations and math and computers and so forth, we're gonna need to know how to do them within a certain period of time, right? We can't, you know, wander off and, you know, how, how you say, like lag, right? You can't you know, be like that knowledge. So that's why you're given that test. And, you know, if I were to be, you know, distracted in class, not focused, right? Texting my friend back and forth during that class, I wouldn't have, you know, as great ability to hear and retain that knowledge. And my ability to be a student in that area would have been hindered. So therefore, you know, I suggest either turn off your phone completely and you know either don't even bring it right, there'll be so many times where i wouldn't even bring my phone to class right, because i really wanted to pay attention and learn and not having the phone even present took away you know that distraction it was out of sight and out of my mind which is a good thing and you know without further ado we were going to give you success to Number two, for students, and that is to apply various sets of memorization and study techniques. There's a Pomodoro method, but if you've all heard, right, where you study for around, I think it's like 20 minutes, and you take a break, for a small little five minute, 10 minute break, and you keep doing it because for so many of us, we may wanna cram for a test, right? Study for hours on end, starve ourselves, and <laughs> not starve us, right? Really make ourselves, yeah, we can starve ourselves all the time, right? It's just sit there for hours upon hours studying, right? Keeping our heads in the book. And that has proven to, been proven to not be the most effective way 
to do it, right? To retain that information, which is the end goal for us. So therefore, you know, by studying, you know, for these blocks of time, right? 20 minutes, you can even move it up to 30, or even last 15, right? Whatever works for you. And, you know, doing that little, you know, period of study and then taking a break, giving your mind time to relax and take in the knowledge that was just presented to it. Because if you keep shoving knowledge into it, it's gonna get overloaded, right? Overworked, right? It's just too much information. And, you know, you won't retain it as easily. It'll take longer, right? It's almost like a printer being jammed, right? You try to print a bunch of stuff for hours upon hours on end. The printer's gonna get hot. And, you know, it, it eventually will stop working, right? It'll pause, right? Because if you don't do those pauses yourself, your mind will. And you won't necessarily know it, but then you'll be studying for pretty much a reason because you won't be retaining the information because your brain is tired, it's overworked. So use those techniques and you will become a better student. And without further ado, we're gonna go hello into tip number three, or number three, for you know, success in the classroom. And <laughs> that is, you know, a secret technique of mine, and that is to be friendly with everyone there, right? Make connections. Every class that you have is a networking opportunity, right? Not just the friends that you meet, but with the teachers. Those teachers can introduce you to other people, right? Within your field, they probably know someone powerful, right? Someone that can teach you something new. And so can the other students from their experiences. But I don't know how many times, but I've been in a class for a couple months studying so hard by myself. And, you know, along the way, I met one person who introduced me to another person who introduced me to another person. And they showed me their ways of studying, right? Their little tricks. And by studying together, by discussing the topics as a group, I did a lot better. It was so much easier. And guess what? After the class, they'll be your friend, right? Hopefully. And you'll keep learning, you'll keep absorbing new information, right? Because if you just go about the journey by yourself, the knowledge will start and stop only with you. But those other people can teach you, right? It's not you having to go in front of a computer or a textbook and learn again. It'll just be through a conversation with your classmates who did the same thing as you, went through the same courses and so forth, or the teachers as well, right? A lot of the teachers, you know, they may not seem very approachable. You may be intimidated, but a lot of them are very nice people because believe it or not, they were in your same position a couple of years ago. <laughs> so by having that common, you know, nature, that common, a banality, you know, you are on the same, you know, level as them. You're, you share that thing in common. That's being going through the same thing as them. So do that, right? Create your network within the classroom and you will be a better student going forward. And you know, without further ado, we are gonna go into tip number four for students. And that is repetition. Repetition, right? Doing what you're doing in the class over and over again, right? And it doesn't end with just reading the book. Right? You want to be able to write out the examples and apply them, right? And say them over in your head and be able, you know, to perform different examples, right? Apply them in different methods, right? That's why in many textbooks, they don't just have normal problems, right? Like a math book doesn't have five plus five, right, equals 10. But they have more complex issues, right? It'll be like five fish, right? Then four ducks entered, or, and then <laughs> a boat came by. And how many objects are in total? 10, right? They'll have real world scenarios, right? Besides the equation. And that, that's not there just for fun. That's there, you know, to make you, you know, more able to apply the information that you learned. Try to handle a bunch of different real world 
scenarios because that's the end goal you know, of going to school, right? It's not just to torture you and <laughs> force you to study these things they meet you may not want to learn, but it's to make you good at your craft, right? Something that an employer would pay top dollar for, right? So you can be, you know, someone that serves humanity in a particular way. So, no, we hope you enjoyed these four tips for students and you know, we wish you the best success in the classroom and onward. So for that, we say thank you very much, as always, and goodbye.